Hey everyone, this is Scrap Computer here. This guide is going to cover and explain the AD Carry Urgot. First up, I'm going to cover a long explanation on Urgot before I get into this guide, as he is one of those champions no one really knows anything about, or even the barely know where to place him in which lane. Now, you can skip this, check the description, and click on and skip please if you don't want to hear it. First up, he can be placed as a top, a mid laner, an AD carry, and do well. He can go top and wreck, mid and wreck, and AD carry and wreck. He is a very versatile champion. He works well in all lanes due to his laning phase and potential, and of course, his passive. Mid lane, you can nullify heavy caster bursts with your passive, and you should be tanky enough to survive anyway. In addition, they can't deal with your harass. This guide will be covering the AD carry aspect of Urgot, but I'm, in saying this, I'm covering his kit, not him as an AD carry. All my guides are the same. You can look at my Graves guide and go mid lane with it, and for the most part, most of the tips will still be applicable, around 90%. But for this guide, I'm going to be mainly concentrating a little bit more on the AD carry Urgot. Urgot can be played in two ways. The first is full DPS Urgot. Urgot can sit back and full DPS his enemies with a mass amount of damaging stats and items. This allows him to do decent damage in teamfights and more importantly, siege well. I personally hate this, as it means you can't really use your ultimate at any real point in the game. And another thing, he has less damage than 90% of the other carries anyway, and low range. Oh, and zero mobility. What's the point in playing a AD carry who has less damage? It's it's pointless. I do not like full DPS Urgot. I mean, it can work, it's, it's, it's okay, but I don't like it. I personally think he's crap. He can get popped easily and does less damage than the other carries. This is why I don't think he's not a conventional AD carry in this sense. The second way is debuff DPS tank. Urgot can also be used very effectively as a debuff tank. Urgot can provide his passive debuff, his slow with his W, and his armor shred with his E. Overall this means he can debuff an enemy quite heavily, while still doing okay damage and being a tanky mid laner who can be used to pick off anyone with his ultimate at will. It's more of a utility urgot. This makes a lot more sense to me as you can be used as an off tank for your team and allow you to ultimate still because you're tanky enough. Here is a basic tactic and the logic of full DPS tank urgot. You ulti, you pick off a carry for free. They focus you, the tank urgot. Remember you've switched, so their carry is probably dead already, but you're tanky. And you just got a free 120 armor and magic resist, and you're a tank. They blow everything on you, and they're damaging a tanky Urgot. Even if they manage to get you just about, they will blow at least half of their spells on you. Now, your DPS jungler, mid, and top laner come to clean up the debuff team, after they used all their spells, and after their team has killed your, the enemy backliner. Remember, you picked someone, so it's swapping a tanker got a frontliner, for a backliner. You, they get the kill, and they just about kill the tank. Imagine forcing someone to focus the tank. This is essentially what this tactic is. It's a basic but useful tactic. Urgot was used in the LCS for this. His ultimate was OP until they nerfed it at lower levels. But late game, it's still the same. If you can coordinate with the team, Urgot is amazing. This is why he's not successful in solo queue. Now I've went over the two ways you can play him, now I'll cover an overview. And back to the normal guide as if it's usual. Range, 425. Main damage orientation, AD. Resource, mana. Main role, AD carry slash any. He normally means AD carry, but he can go mid and top. Overall skill cap, low. Urgot is an immobile caster based AD carry. Urgot is one of the strongest start game lane bullies in the entire game, having the ability to attack his target and reduce their damage. Fire a missile that will also apply this passive and do a crap ton of damage. Put a shield over himself which will also make all of his auto attacks and Qs slow down his target. Shoot a grenade that will shred the armor of everyone hit 
and allow him to lock on about a million cues to take out half of your health. And there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, and switch positions with someone with a potential 850 range. This can lead them under the turret, over a wall, or merely into your entire team to kill them all. Urgot is a very powerful laner, but lacks proper teamfight potential as he has no real hard escape at all, and of course, his most gapping weakness. His range which sits at the lowest of all AD carries at a measly 425. These two traits alone have me has meant Urgot never really gets to see any big play. This for me is misplaced. If versus a team of assassins for example, Urgot has the ability to tank them out and still do decent damage. As long as your team have damage, Urgot isn't the damage AD carry, he's not the damage mid or top. He can do damage, but for the most part he's another mid laner or t frontliner to protect your team and to pick out one of the backliners. This is Urgot's job, he can pick any backliner in existence and do very well versus them. This is why you play Urgot, you don't play him for the crazy deeps or the insane mobility but his utility. He is a good AD carry tank pick, if you're versus a very bursty team they can't just pop an Urgot, they just can't. Glass cannon teams are common. They don't protect a squishy Eddie carry in solo queue. You're always with no one who will protect you. So why not pick an Urgot to solve this problem as you can survive quite a bit. So now you've heard an overview, let's get into the guide. Runes. Here's my rune setup. I get 9 armor penetration marks, 5 armor seals and 4 seals of HP. I then get 4 flat glyphs of magic resist, then 5 skilling magic resist glyphs. You can swap the skilling glyph for a 9 flat magic resist if your verse is a very heavy magic resist lean, like a karma support or an Annie support for example. I then grab 3 quints of armor penetration. Total armor penetration, 19.2. This might seem weird and very unnatural to not be running AD marks on, well, conventionally an AD carry. However, on Urgot, those aren't necessary. Acid Hunter doesn't scale off bonus AD, as with most abilities. It scales off total AD, meaning that your base damage should be enough early. The armor penetration just allows Acid Hunter to deal more damage than you would if you ran AD marks, because you already have enough AD. And these marks are still relevant mid-game. Masteries. There are two mastery sets you can run on Urgot depending on your role. Mastery set number one. For damage Urgot, generally this will be for the mid and bot lane Urgots. For this I run 23-7-0. This is one difference than most of my other mastery pages. The first is me getting Spell and Bleed, I get this on Urgot as he is a caster auto attack carry. He still uses abilities in lane as often as auto attacks, or generally speaking, so he can get these out of the masteries and still utilise them. Mastery set number 2, for tanky DPS Urgot. This one I advise, generally it will be used for the top lane or tanky mid lane Urgots. For this set I run 9, 21, 0. As you can see we get as many tanky stats as we can grab, so we can get into our enemy's face and duel them without the risk of dying. This is for top lane where you have to trade blows and you simply put have to survive a mid lane where you have to get through that burst. Your start game damage is enough and Urgot's one of the rare carries and rare champions that doesn't necessarily need an aggressive mastery set to do well start game. Summoner spells. These are the viable summoner spells on Urgot, they're all pretty self explanatory on an AD carry. You can also pick exhaust and ignite on Urgot as he can utilise them due to his low range and bursty nature start game. Remember to only pick one aggressive summoner spell and one defensive, standard with most steady carries. Compositions to pick Urgot versus Urgot works well like the compositions I've shown below. Bruiser compositions, compositions with no real pick potential, as you know most steady carries kind of don't like that. This is shown to the left. As I mentioned in the description, Urgot can also work well with the comp on the right, a bursty comp that doesn't really care for an AD carry's protection. This means they will focus you and since you're a tanky Urgot, you're not really gonna die, it's like them focusing the tank. 
This is actually a good tactic that has went out of favour in Season 2 somewhere, but it's still very effective. Compositions to pick Urgot with Urgot works well with the compositions like I've shown below. As you can see they have tons of protection for our low range friend, and zero mobility based Urgot. Urgot would be a sitting duck without these people. This is standard for most carries as they can provide very hard CC, hence protection for Urgot. I know Urgot is still a tank, or a tanky as hell, for an AD carry, but he still needs that protection to some degree. Also, CC means an easily landed E QQQ combo for the most part. If someone CC'd, Urgot will land it with ease. Bot lanes to pick Urgot versus. Urgot does not completely counter these lanes, he can still lose. He just has a higher chance to win versus these lanes because of attributes or just singular logical matchups. Graves. He has lowish range compared to most Eddie carries, hence he can't really poke you down with auto attacks. You can always EQ him and your passive will lower his damage pretty heavily as it will counter his burst. You're also kind of tanky and really too much for him to deal with to burst down in one go. Vein. A single EQ combo will get her out of lane with ease. She is too weak early game to deal with Urgot if you land a single E. She can avoid your E, which is good, but with even a tiny bit of luck and if you land one, you will win the lane. Ash. She has no mobility and will be Urgot fodder for most of the game. Late game, she has nothing to counter his ultimate. Kog'Maw. Much like Ash, he has no real escape and no low cooldown mobility, so he can't really do much versus Urgot. In addition, you can land those E's with ease as, well, Kog'Maw has nothing to avoid it. Ezreal. A good Ezreal can avoid the E's, but if he even lands one, he will be zoned heavily. He also has no way to actually win the lane. He can only CS from range and pray you don't land an E. Ezreal should never ever kill you because you're too tanky to be dealt with. Draven. Anytime Draven uses a Q, one of his axes, use your E onto the sigil and he will get hit with the E if he follows through on the axe or he'll have to drop it. He won't be able to farm with this Q if he notices this tactic you're employing. Oh, uh, but wait, it doesn't matter, he has no hard mobility anyway. You should be landing E's even without this tactic but it's very useful. In addition, your ultimate can make him miss all of his axes and he has no mobility well, to avoid this if he gets ultied into the team, so overall, very good. Generally overall, anyone who has low mobility, which makes your E easy to land, is normally an easy game. In addition, Urgot is very good versus Burst, as he can lower it and kind of put a sort of exhaust on it with his passive. Bot lanes to avoid. These matchups depend on your support, your skill level, your enemy skill level, jungle ganks, roams, etc. These are just lanes that will crap on you for the most part, but you can theoretically win. Sivir. She can E, your E, each and every time and counter burst you. This can also make your complete E reliance become a massive factor. She can also shove you under turret with her wave clear, and there's nothing you can do except sit there and farm like an idiot. Caitlyn. Her range and decent mobility means she can poke you out of lane with ease. In addition, the range also provides her with protection, as landing an E out of massive range is quite difficult. Lucian. A surprising counter. He can keep you under turret if he cues the wave and just passes. You will also never land an E as he will E when you do it, and his with a double shot his cooldown will be lower than your E anyway, and it's kind of difficult to land. Kalista. Her passive means you won't be landing an E forever. During the entire laning phase, if you land an E, I'll give you a medal. Since your E is so core, avoid this champion if you can. Varus. He can poke you with that Q and lock you down for an eternity when he gets his ultimate. In addition, he also has high burst and when you land your E, he will counter it with his E and run away. You're not allowed to follow because the E slow will stop you picking up all the Qs, so landing your full combo will pretty much be a no-go. Sustain lanes. Nami and Soraka or Sona or any other sustain you can think of can counter Urgot badly. He relies on grinding your enemy down and slowly killing them over two combos or three combos. If your enemy can nullify this, it means you're gonna have a bad day. Overall, if your enemy can lock down or avoid that E, 
avoid them. In addition, if you know you have hard sustain or versus it, I generally wouldn't pick Urgot as well. Besides that, it's pretty much open season. Good supports with Urgot. A note is that all supports can work. These are just the ones that are, for me, a little bit more effective. Tarek. This gem dude is great for helping you land that all vital E for the core EQQ combo. In addition, his W armor shred maxed with your E shred means your enemy might as well not have armor at all. You will shred all game, even versus the tankiest tanks. A very good support. Leona. Pretty standard lockdown for your E so you can burst. In addition, Leona's bursts match with your damage can lead for a lot of kills during the laning phase, which gives them a lot of general lane control. Thresh. He is amazing with Urgot. As Urgot suffers from no mobility syndrome, the Thresh Lantern and his kit, generally speaking, can protect Urgot late game, as well as providing him with a good laning phase with the Q lockdown and general damage. Janna. If versus a heavy, heavy engaged team, you may consider getting Janna with Urgot to provide him with protection for all of the game. Janna can also W and Q your enemy to make Urgot's E easier to land. Match this with the shield, it will make your Q do ridiculous amounts of damage. In addition, on top of this, a good tactic is when Urgot ulties in, if Janna flashes, she can give him a free ulti because she'll protect him when he switched, whereas no one can protect your enemy when you've switched them. It's a pretty cool tactic. Morgana. Black Shield provides great protection. Her kit can also lock down your enemy so you can land your E or just aggressively lock down an enemy. This CC can be used to defend Urgot as well, a good support with anyone. And also you can black shield Urgot before he switches to give him more survivability even more so. Lulu. During the laning phase her W and Q makes your E pretty easy to land. She can also protect you late game with her general kit. Pretty much she's an all rounder and quite good. Overall try to pick Urgot with the support who can lock down your enemy so you can land the E with hard CC or protect you late game. This is normally picked with a combination of both as Urgot's pretty good with both. This is why I've mentioned these champions because they provide both. They can protect you and they're also good aggressively. Pretty good. Leveling order. There is only really one main leveling order and one viable leveling order and this is shown below. First up you max your Q for the most amount of damage. Then your E to get the lockdown and cooldown down as much as possible as well as the armor shred. Then finally your W as it only provides a slow which you don't really need that heavily and obviously get your ultimate anytime you possibly can. This is really just to buffer out your combat stats and it's pretty standard. No other leveling order would provide this for the most part so try to get this one. Urgot's passive, Zon Touched Bolt Augmenter. Urgot's basic attacks and Acid Hunter reduce all damage that his target deals by 15% for 2.5 seconds. Uses and tips. Number one, this passive does not affect true damage dealt by his target. This makes stopping a vein very hard in other words. This is a little known fact. Number two, when this ability is affected, an enemy will have a small glow coming from them, shown below. This is an easy visual way to see who you have debuffed and who you haven't. Number three, this passive does not stack. Subsequent auto attacks or acid hunters will only refresh the duration of the debuff. Stacking this would be OP. Number four. This is a given, but I want to emphasize that this passive works versus enemy spells, as well as any, literally any damage form they can throw at you. Auto attacks, spells, all of it will do less damage. Of course, besides true damage. Number five. This ability is great to help your jungler take less damage when taking any jungle camp. This is especially important start game to help your jungler out with the clear and to keep them as healthy as possible. Number 6. This passive can be applied to as many people as you can queue and auto attack in the time it takes for the passive to wear off. This means you should be applying it liberally to as many people as you literally can. Number 7. To put this ability in context, it's about one third the strength of an exhaust. Do not underestimate the power of this ability. I can't believe no one talks about this passive. Number 8. 
Urgot's passive is amazing for countering bursty champions to a small extent. 15% of a Vegar's damage being removed? Well, amazing, that can stop a lot of crap and a lot of bursts to help your team out. If you see a caster like Vegar about to cast, cue them or auto attack him to stop a large amount of damage. Number 9. Can be used to help win trades. If you apply this early in the fight you can debuff your enemy, meaning their trade potential will be diminished which also will help you win trades a lot more easily. Number 10. May be used to counter AoE or area of effect damage. If an Amumu is running at your team, immediately Q or auto attack him to nullify his AoE to some extent. The same goes for a crazy cart that's running at you or anyone else you can think of. Number 11. Urgot's passive does not work on turrets. Number 12. A small but intelligent use of this ability is to start the minion wave pushing towards your enemies is to attack the cannon and caster creeps one at a time and finishing them by rotating auto attacks. They will have decreased damage which means that your minions will survive a little longer, hence they will push a little better, a pretty neat and out of the box tactic. Number 13, can also save an ally. If an ally is getting damaged and the final auto attack is going their way, if you auto attack the enemy, the small difference in damage could save them, I've actually saved people with this. Or if your Ari is about half health and Vegar ulties last second, if you queue your auto attack, you could potentially save the Ari. This is great for saving allies, it just isn't as noticeable as like stunning them or something, but it is very effective. Number 14. Can I just say, this decreases all damage to everyone including your teammates by 15%. How can people think this is a crap passive? I could argue it's one of the best in the entire game. Urgot's Q, Acid Hunter. Urgot fires a missile and aligns towards the cursor, dealing physical damage to the first enemy it hits. His passive is also applied to the target. Killing a unit will refund half of the mana cost. Missile lock can be achieved by holding the cursor over a unit afflicted by Noxian Corrosive Charge when casting, causing Acid Hunters to fly directly to the target, ignoring all other units. Acid Hunter can lock onto units hidden in the fog of war, brush and in stealth, but does not grant sight of units hit. Ability range 1000 or 1200 if ease locked on. I'll get into this later. In this section I'll be covering the lock on cues and normal cues. I will tell you which one, if you just listen I'll probably mention if it's lock on or not. If I don't it's based on just hitting a normal Acid Hunter in general. It doesn't matter if it's with your E or just normally. Pretty basic, I'll pretty much mention it, just to ensure no confusion happens. Number 1. Acid Hunter will apply your passive, I just wanted to mention that before we begin. Number 2. Your Q is a collider skill shot, in other words it will hit and be stopped by the first target struck. This is not the case with the EQ combo, which will mean that your Qs cannot be stopped and is completely targeted. Number 3. This ability is considered to be a projectile for Unbreakable and Wind Wall, except if it's an EQ combo. Number 4. This ability is fantastic for pushing minion waves. Number 5. Spell Shields will block this ability, and the affliction of your passive. Number 6. The lock on casting Acid Hunter does not need vision of your target to activate, as long as the cursor is hovering over an enemy debuffed by Noxian Corrosive Charge and they're within the ability radius around Urgot. The missile will lock on trigger, this includes enemies hidden in the bush. Number 7. Coming on from the previous point, this also means that the age old tactic of running into a bush when your Urgot has got his E lock on you is useless, yes useless, completely garbage. Just follow your enemy with the Q and smack Q a ton of times, mentally, and you'll eventually get them and it'll keep on firing to them even though they're in the bush. This is a big tip and a massive point even though it's in the description, no one uses it. Number 8. Coming on from the previous point, this includes stealth units. If a stealth unit is locked on with the E, you can still fire your cues and get a small indicator like shown below. Please oh please use these points. Number 9. Can be used to help you CS under turret. Remember to, you get half of the mana back so don't be afraid to do this. You should not be losing CS under turret as Urgot. A small but very important point. 
Number 10. Your lock on of EQ combo is fantastic for applying massive amounts of harass to your enemy. This is actually the bread and butter of this skill and I'm only going to mention it once because it's, it is very standard. But the EQ combo is standard as a poke harass toe. Number 11. Remember you can lock on to your enemy and chase down as many Qs as you can. Too many people get the all important Q land. Q once and let their enemy run away. Chase them down. Get all of those Qs. Chase them down. Run past minions if you have to. Number 12. Your W Tarot Capacitor will work with your lock on Qs and Qs in general. Remember to use it. Number 13. Coming on from the previous point, if you land your E, use your W to lock down your enemy so they can't, as a matter of fact, get away from you landing all of your Qs anyway, even if they run. Again, too many people play our god and don't use W ever the entire game. It's important. Number 14. Acid Hunter is actually an amazing scouting tool. If the projectile gets broken or you hear the infamous sound effect, you will know someone's in the bush. This is actually an important point that makes Urgot one of the best low cooldown bush checkers in the game. I've got a face check guide so you can probably check that out as well. Number 15. Urgot's Q does not apply lifesteal in any way. Only spell vamp which no player with a functioning brain should be getting. Number 16. You can also harass with your normal Qs without lockdown. Many only go for the EQ lockdown. Many people just forget and most of your enemies will not expect a normal Q harass ever, I guarantee you. This tactic has given me so many free Qs in lane I don't even want to mention it. Number 17. Acid Hunter is amazing to ensure that any bush zone support are zoned themselves. Fire Qs into the side bush to make sure that blitz cannot stay there for free. Number 18. As many ergots get tier of the goddess, this ability is your best chance to get your stacks up effectively and quickly. When walking to base, when in base, when going back to lean, when in lean, basically everywhere due to its low cooldown and low mana cost. Remember this. Number 19. This ability is great to kite your enemies due to its long range in comparison to the rest of your auto attacks and abilities. You can run and keep firing cues behind you for the long range and remain safe. Number 20. Acid Hunter works with W, so coming on from the previous point, we can kite to an amazing standard with the slow and at range and with Qs. Number 21. Can be used to help you participate in team fights when low. If at a risk of death, you can remain on the outskirts of a fight and fire Qs at a safe range, allowing you to help and not be at risk. Number 22. May also be used to check for buff camps, normal camps, or even Baron and Dragon. As I mentioned earlier, your Q is a sound effect when it hits something. So if we fire into the Baron pit and we get no sound, we know the Baron has been taken. Or if we fire it to the enemy blue buff over the wall and we hear a sound, we know it's there. A very good jungle scout tool. Number 23. Acid Hunter may also steal the Baron and Dragon. Although this is rare, the range on this ability is enough to reach both of the pits. Number 24. This ability is important to help you win trades during the laning phase. This is due to two things. The first up is the straight up damage a normal Q can do, and of course your EQ combo can do. The second is the fact that this ability applies your passive to reduce the enemy's damage, hence making it easier to win trades. Number 25. Urgot's Q is amazing for proccing Trinity Force and Sheen procs. For those of you that build those items due to Urgot's low Q mana cost and low cooldown, it's a very easy way to get Q and Sheen procs with this ability. A small for important point for those of you that do get Trinity Force on Urgot. Number 26. This ability is your best chance to apply your passive at range due to its range. This can also help your teammate from being bursted down, damaged in general. This is a huge use of this ability, apply it at range. Number 27. Acid Hunter and your passive are great for potentially saving a teammate. If you reduce an enemy's damage, they will have more trouble finishing your ally. This has actually saved a couple of my teammates. A third of an exhaust for free and you're not using it? No way. Number 28. Your Q is great for getting those dangerous CS that would normally be too unsafe to get. So if you're getting zoned heavily, this is a good way to keep up with CS due to the low cooldown and of course the low, well, mana cost and its refund. 
Urgot's W, Terra Capacitor, active. Urgot charges up his capacitor to gain a shield that absorbs damage for up to 7 seconds. While the shield is active, Urgot's basic attacks and acid hunter missiles will slow the target hit for 1.5 seconds. Slow, 20, 25, 30, 35 and 40 percent. Uses and tips. Number 1. Terra Capacitor has no cast time and does not interrupt Urgot's previous orders. Number 2. Terra Capacitor may be activated while channeling your ultimate without cancelling the channel. Number 3. Terra Capacitor slow does not stack. Sequential auto attacks of Acid Hunter will only refresh the duration of the slow. The same with your auto attacks. Number 4. If your W is activated while auto attacking or Acid Hunter projectiles are in mid flight, they will still slow on impact. This means you should activate your W literally last second, just before that Q lands. This is actually a good point to get the most out of this ability. Number 5. Can be used with your Q and auto attacks to kite any target. The slow will make kiting a breeze, similar to a Janus support. Going to die alone. Number 6. This ability is great to help set up your E Q combo. People complain that Urgot's E is extremely hard to land. This is true. You can make it easier by activating your W, auto attack slow your target and then land the E. This is a massive point for those Urgot players that have trouble landing the E's. Use your W to slow your enemy so your E is easier to land. Number 7. Your W is good for cutting jungle camps to take less damage from them. The movement speed slow will mean you will take less damage. Number 8. The slow will be applied to the target if you EQ them. This makes it a lot easier to land the maximum amount of Qs possible before your enemy can run away. Number 9. The shield aspect of this ability is great to help you nullify harass. Number 10. Terra Capacitor Shield is fantastic to help you win trades, as it nullifies some damage. Number 11. If the shield is broken during its use, the movement speed slow aspect will be removed as well. This means that if you're fighting and you need to kite pretty badly, you may consider saving the shield until you get a little distance between you and your target. Shield broken equals no kite. You may need to save this sometimes to get a little distance so they don't just break the shield and you get no kite. Number 12. This ability is fantastic to help you catch fleeing enemies. If you land a Q with your W activated, you can easily catch most enemies. Number 13. Can be used to perma slow if you get enough auto attacks and Qs off during its use. This is a great point when kiting and chasing down enemies. Number 14. This ability, as with all shields, is great to potentially stop executes and reset abilities. Number 15. When activated, this ability can be used in sequence with your Q and auto attack to slow down an enemy to save an ally, as with most of Urgot's kit. If you slow them down, they can't catch up and you'll have applied a passive, which also means they've less damage anyway. Overall, Urgot is good at saving allies. Urgot's E, Noxian Corrosive Charge, active. Urgot launches a corrosive charge at a target 150 radius area, afflicting all enemies hit for 5 seconds. Enemies afflicted by the charge have their armor reduced by a percentage and take physical damage over the duration. Ability range, 900. Armor Shred, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20 percent. Uses and Tips Number 1. Spell Shields will block the application of the debuff. Number 2. Noxie Inclusive Charge grants a brief instance of sight around where it's cast. This means it can be a great scouting tool when checking bushes. And yes, that's a total of two face check abilities Urgot has. You should not be getting caught. Number 3. This ability is considered to be a projectile for Unbreakable and Wind Wall. It's actually a pretty big counter. Number 4. The armor reduction of this ability is dynamic. If a debuff unit's armor changes for any reason, the reduction will adjust itself accordingly. This means self armor buffs after an enemy has been affected with this E will still take effect. Number 5. The bread and butter of this skill is to mark your targets so you can land some targeted Qs. This is what you'll spend 60% of your time doing for the most part, trying to land this ability to land some targeted Qs. Number 6. 
can be used to help push minion waves and kill jungle camps with a massive amount of damage and armor shred with this ability. Number 7. A note coming on from the previous section is to apply this to help your jungler take a jungle camp. This will remove the armor of a camp to give your jungler an easier time. Add this to an auto attack to decrease the well, camp's damage, you'll help your jungler out massively. Number 8. Corrosive charge is great for helping you kill tanks at all points during the game because of, well, this massive armor shred. Number 9. This ability is also amazing for helping you and your team kill tanks. Do not be selfish with this ability. Try to apply it onto heavily armored enemies as well as backliners to help your team kill them. 20% off a tank's armor? Are you serious? This can help your team killing even the most tankiest of enemies. Number 10. Corrosive Charge can zone enemies off creeps. No one will ever get a CS for a head of E. They just won't, it's a catch 22. As soon as the enemy goes for a large cannon creep, I fire my E to where they're going to be trying to CS. This means that either they'll get the CS, and I'll hit my E and get an EQ combo, or the most common and latter use will be people will just lose the CS. Urgot is master of zoning people off the creep line to make them miss CS. Number 11. During teamfights, this ability is amazing for debuffing a large amount of enemies. Try to liberally apply this debuff to as many enemies as possible to help your whole team in killing them. And of course, to get as many E marks so you can queue as, well, a large amount of targets, of potential targets. Number 12. Can be used to finish off a fleeing enemy due to its 900 range. This is greater than your auto attack range, so it's still an applicable tactic. Number 13. Attempt to fire this ability from a bush. All enemies will be avoiding your E like the plague. To help you bad Eing Urgots, you should be firing this from a bush if you ever can to increase the chance of landing this for your EQ combo. Remember, they won't get to see the projectile until it's pretty much on them. And of course, they won't see the wind up of this animation. Try to use it from a bush if you're bad at landing E. Number 14. An appendage of the previous point is to use blind spots to land your E. I have a guide on this, which will be, well, an example will be on the screen now. You can find my detailed lean blind spot guide on my channel. I go over all lean blind spots, including bot lean, and would advise you use them to play Urgot to help land those E's. Number 15. This ability can be used to save an ally, as literally no one on this earth wants to get hit by your E. You may consider firing E at a chasing enemy. 99% of people will automatically run away or around the E, thwarting their process. Urgot's Ultimate Hyperkinetic Position Reverser Active Urgot targets an enemy champion and channels for one second, suppressing the target for the duration. If the channel completes, Urgot and the target will swap positions. The target will be slowed by 40% for 3 seconds, and Urgot will ignore unit collision for 1 second. Urgot gains bonus armor and magic resistance for 5 seconds, starting from the beginning of the channel time. Ability range 550, 700, and 850. Yes, 850 at max rank. Most people don't understand that this skills with level and its range is ridiculous at its max. Bonus armor and magic resist. 60, 90, 120. Yes, these numbers are real. Uses and tips. Number one, this ability does not apply spell effects in any way. No rallies with ultimate in other words. Number two, spell shields will block the initial suppression but will not prevent the blink and slow should Urgot complete the channel anyway. Number 3. Crowd control immunity such as Black Shield prevents the suppression effect and the switch. This is a pretty big counter. Number 4. Remove Scurvy, Quicksilver Sash and Mercurial Scimitar will remove both the suppression and the appending displacement and slow. Urgot will still re receive the full bonus himself, however. This means QSS and Mercurial Skim are a must if you're versus an Urgot. Oh, and Gangplank is also awesome. Number 5. 
If Urgot is immobilized or displaced somehow when the channel completes, neither Urgot nor his target will be moved. In other words, it's a channel ability and it can be cancelled with CC and displacements. This is a big point, do not use this ability in front of anyone with decent CC who can stop it. Number 6. Urgot's ultimate can stop enemy channeled ultimates. A channel stops a channel. For example, if an enemy fed Kanarita comes in and she ulties, no need to fear, simply ulti her when she ulties. We will find out what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object I suppose. Number 7. May be used to catch a fleeing enemy with this ability's long max range. You both can make them immobile and of course help your team in catching and racking them. Number 8. Urgot's ultimate is powerful but the target you choose to swap must be either A, an important carry or B, uh, well and B, not a disruptive caster. Never swap, even if they're low, never swap a disruptive caster like an Amumu into your team. Making a massive disruptor, a disruptor into the middle of your team is not exactly a good tactic. You'll die. I've seen Urgots do this before. Please never, ever bring in someone like that. Ever. It doesn't matter how low they are. Just don't. Number 9. This ability is great for increasing your all-in potential. This is due to the free armor and magic resist you receive. Most people just use this for the switch, but smart people like you guys are going to use it for the armor as well if it's a at the start of a fight. Use this just as the fight begins to get the free stats as soon as possible and fight with the armor and MR of a tank. Too many people are using this at the very end of a fight where you're really low HP, you've got like 300 HP and you use it. This isn't enough, get the full 5 seconds out of it, you might as well. Number 10, can be used to help you survive team fights. Much the same point as before, but it's noteworthy to help you survive team fights for the most part. I mean, an extra 120 armor and magic resist could help you if you're getting focused. Number 11. May be used to save allies. Again, I know. This ability can suppress and switch your position, which means if an ally is about to die, simply switch out the, your enemy and you'll easily save any ally. Just ensure this doesn't kill you, uh, but if, you know, if they're chasing, overextending, you can do this. Number 12. Due to the nature of this ability, most Urgots build quite tanky so they can switch and survive the inevitable burst coming their way. The tankiness and of course your ultimate stats will make the enemy focus you for one of their carries. The difference is that their carry will die in a second. And you're basically a second tank. This is why Urgot is viable but misunderstood. Number 13. An awesome tactic for this ability is to pull your enemy under the turret. The range of this ability can surprise many people and get them onto your turret for a free kill. Number 14. Urgot's ulti is actually quite a decent escape ability if used right. You can ulti someone if you get caught on the wrong side of the map to swap places with them to give you a head start towards your turrets. Number 15. This ability can also help you escape over walls. If a set of enemies are chasing you and you vision over one of them over a wall, you can ulti and get away. Number 16. You can pull off some decent teamwork escapes. If your support has a heavy displacement like an Alistair, you can displace the enemy over a wall or even just further away and ulti that enemy to switch places with them to get a free escape. Number 17. This ability is great for cancelling dash abilities such as Tristana and Corky's escape. Wait until I use the abilities and then use your ultimate to pretty much cancel it and screw them over badly. Number 18. A basic use for this ability is to initiate a team fight. A good flash ulti combo can get even the safest enemy carries for an easy team fight victory. Number 19. A good point is that Urgot's ultimate is unbelievable for setting up jungle ganks. If your jungler's about to gank, switch them on your side of the map and let them get a free kill and let the free kills commence. Uh, number 20 of Urgot's ultimate can flash cancel uh, to help you get away or something. Leaning section, lean type, kill slash poke. Playstyle, very aggressive. Now before we get into this lean, Urgot is a kill and poke lean. He relies on crapping on his leaning opponent and controlling the lean. With Urgot, you will be wanting to poke heavily and attempt to main or at least damage them at any time you can. 
Urgot is a Killian who has great zone potential, and you should not be allowing your laning opponent to even get one CS. Now Urgot's laning phase is about killing, zoning and poking your opponent to get ahead. Urgot is a strong start game carry, and I would say one of the strongest who can crush an enemy. And if he gets a kill, he can snowball very heavily. If behind, he can CS from range. It's very hard, if not impossible, to really sh heavily shut down an Urgot. Let's get in how to play the lane first. First up, we get our Q to provide us with the highest amount of damage at level 1, and of course, harass potential. From here, we walk into lane and start pushing the weave to get the minions on our side to get that quick level advantage. Remember, at level 2 you have very powerful burst with your EQ combo. We have to get there before our enemies. This should be your tactic with every kill or poke lane matchup. When I get my level 2, I get into position for one of the basic harass combos. I normally go with my EQQQ combo. If me and my support can get these combos, they will be low and then I'll tell my support to go on the squishiest member on the enemy lane. I run into them and do the harass combo. If my laning partner also done decent bursts, the enemy will be dead or at least extremely low. This leaves you with plenty of ease to control the lane while I go back or hide behind the turret. From here, after your burst, back off and wait for your cooldowns to do it again. Urgot's start game is quite, well, pretty much essentially fully cooldown reliant. So always remember to back off after your burst and wait for your relatively short cooldowns to come back. From here is where you can start completely controlling the lane. Urgot is the start game lane bully of the entire game. If you just walk in, always try to E them. If you can even get one tag, you should be starting to crush the lane. I walk and try to harass with one of my all-in combos every time my enemy goes for a CS, or at least make them and force them to lose CS when I E. Run at them when they get close to the wave and force trades or at the very least throw some EQs down there to harass your enemy. You should be zoning the heck out of them. The game plan for Urgot never changes, he's a very black and white lane. Go in and try and EQ combo your enemies. If you do this enough, I'll de-engage and finish them off. Remember to land EQ combos and you literally cannot lose the lane, the lane, for the most part. If you're losing, just back off and only CS with your Qs. You may also consider just EQing to lower your enemies so they're at least a little bit afraid and that's pretty much it. And overall, that's pretty much it for the leaning phase. It's standard for any lane bully, just EQ and uh, you know, you'll be K. Teamfight section. Your role in teamfights is fairly simple in theory, deal as much damage as you possibly can. This section will be cut into two further sections, how to teamfight as a damage tank, and of course how to just fight as pure damage or god. I generally advise damage tank but it's up to you. Both. So in a teamfight I wait for my team to provide the catch onto your enemy or wait for their frontline to try and dive me. While waiting you must be EQing and harassing down your enemy at maximum range. This is a big point on Urgot's too many don't do. Landa's EQ range are quite high, you can sit back and poke before the team fight and just generally provide free harass. Do not waste time. Damage Urgot Now when the fight starts, Urgot should use his EQ immediately to do the largest amount of damage to the enemy backline if they're dumb. You must sit back at the maximum range of your EQ combo. Literally, this is how you team fight as Urgot, land the Yi, go to the maximum range and Q as much as you can. Wait until the focus is on another uh, or the, your enemy uses some heavy CC before you do this. It's simple, just relax. From here, auto attack and spam all of your spells. Keep your spells m at maximum distance at around a thousand units and keep using your spells. This is how you safely team fight as Urgot. When the enemy are low and the most threats have been gone or have been used, start auto attacking only if you're relatively safe to do so and using spells on the most relevant target. If an engage is placed upon you, then you should double you and start kiting. Remember to keep kiting. If you get very low, back off and start EQing again and go back to your general combo at the maximum range to stay safe. Most carries have to back off completely but not our god as he can cast from massive ranges. This is why I don't like damage or god, he does good damage at range, but why not just pick a Vayner or Kog'Maw to do more? Damage Tank Urgot After EQing, as I've mentioned, you must start looking out for an enemy who's got out of position. You will be very tanky, so when you see an enemy out of position, ulti them immediately, putting that carry in the middle of your team. 
And then, of course, with the bonus stats, try to flash out, you'll survive when you've switched, and EQ behind you, with, and then of course W, and keep queuing and auto attacking while kiting, and liberally applying your passive. This is it. Ulti, flash, E, W, Q, auto attack people, and that's how you do it. Be in the middle of the front and back line. You're tanky, you're not a true frontliner, but you're also not a backliner. So try to stay in the middle. Auto attack as many targets as you can and I keep applying damage. Urgot is debuff king so apply as many E's and Q's as possible. You can survive when ulting to kill the carry and your enemy probably won't get to kill you with the free stats as you're tanky enough. This is how Urgot is useful. This is a trick with tank Urgot. It's not a trade. It's not like you switch Urgot for their carry and it's a one for one. It's they, you traded one of their carries and they couldn't kill you because you're tanky as hell because you got 120 free magic resist and armor and you're just going to flash out. Of course, in other words, it'll probably be in your favor. Both. If your team is winning, I use my Q and W to chase down my enemy. If my team is losing, I use my W defensively and start queuing behind myself to slow anyone who wanted to pursue me. Try and save your allies with the same treatment uh, of ranged QWs if you can. Uh, if you get a good distance on them, EQ combo behind you, activate W and keep queuing. You can always run and do damage to Zergot if you've got a bit of distance. If you want a more in-depth teamfight guide, I have one of those and going over everything in detail there. So uh, going over it again in this guide, as always, is redundant. And I kind of apologise guys, a lot of people are requesting champions and Urgot is the least played champion in the entire game and I'm unsure of why I'm actually doing this guide. I mean, I actually like Urgot, it's just, uh, hopefully you, at least one person will enjoy this guide. Uh, there, like two or three Urgot players were like, make an Urgot guide, so I decided to make one. And that's the end of the guide guys, I hope it helped. Remember to like it if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it, sub if you like me and unsub if you don't like the video in some cases and it's not up to quality or scratch. You can also share if you think it's good enough, uh, and it would really help me out. And besides that, guys, have a great day, and best of luck in the rift.